Well, welcome. Good evening. Hey, thank you, Dougie. Um, just, a, just a reminder of uh, the sort of theme of our time back since Christmas has been about celebration and abundance and about being the body. And uh, that's the two, two prongs of the themes that have been coming across on our Sunday mornings. So tonight I'm going to talk for a bit and then you're going to do some, we're going to do some work together and then I'm going to talk for a bit more and uh, then we will finish. So we're going to be looking at March the 26th, March the 20th and 27th. We're going to be talking about life groups, Easter open door. And then for the first time in two years, I have a paper notice sheet for you called Spring at Open Door. I would love to take credit for the design, but I can't. <clears throat> so, um, and also please help yourself to donuts on the way out. Otherwise, Vanessa and I will just have to eat them tomorrow. <laughs> Which, <laughs> feel free to take them. See, there's someone that can sit on the front row and in fact wants to sit closer. Um, yeah, March, to, March the 26th which is going to be our fun day. I'm very tempted now to call it, it takes a village to raise a child, but I'd have to explain what I mean by that. And it all came from Anne Newman and uh, what she's doing on that day. So basically what we're looking to do from three in the afternoon till seven is just to be together as a church family in a completely different environment to Sunday morning. We want to have some fun together. We want to build some memories. And we are looking to do something for everyone. So there's going to be a range of activities going from three till seven. Um, in your spring at open door, there's a rough outline of what we're going to be doing. We're going to have Sophie teaching us how to move with our bodies to music. I just can't do it, but I've, I've said to her, look, please, can you do it? Because I cannot lead in this. I once at my old church, we want, I wanted to really help us sing in tongues together. And we we're all a little bit reticent. And particularly people bring prophetic songs. So I chose three Sundays and just prayed and said, right, God, I want a prophetic song for this week. So I came out the front and I did it. The next week, I wanted another prophetic song, so I did it. The third week, I did it again, and I said, look guys, if you don't start singing, you're gonna have to listen to this every week. <laughs> I never had to do another one. <laughs> um, so she'll be doing psalms and stretches and uh, moving to music. And Newman will be leading, that will be up in that room there, the party place. And Newman will be up here and she'll be doing a variety of crafts, and we have a craft competition. All I will say is, begin to save your cereal boxes now, because you will need them the week before this event, okay? So there'll be craft up there. We're looking for Tim to organize an escape room. <laughs> we will have the games room up over in the youth room we'll have one period where we can just people can come and be prayed for we will have a bouncy castle unfortunately my pre my previous church was basically the same design as this except had chairs and chairs in the back there but it was just a little bit narrower and for the millennium we had a big party and we put a big bouncy castle in the middle. And uh, about 10 o'clock at night, once all the kids were getting tired, we let the adults play on it. <laughs> and, and I thought, it's a bouncy castle. You can probably jump from the balcony to the castle. So I did it. And because I was leading the church at the time, then lots of other adults did it. 
which was fine until the following morning when we met in church and we suddenly noticed the kids were climbing the balcony because they hadn't noticed the bouncy castle wasn't there. <laughs> For those health and safety freaks. <laughs> but we just rescued them. We will have tea and coffee and board games. We will even have a quiet space. Then at uh, five o'clock, we're going to eat together and have a meal together. And then at six, six o'clock, um, Hannah will be organizing entertainment for us. That's a clue to her. <laughs> now I have talked to her about it. So we'll be looking really for people to be here from three till seven. There'll be, you know, all the activities will be multi-age. So there's nothing that nobody can do. Um, and so eight, we're looking to get as many of us together as a whole event. There's something for everyone just to be together and uh, enjoy one another's company in a completely different setting. Has anyone got any questions? Hello. That's what normally happens when I talk to little children. <laughs> so yeah, that's three till seven. Go on. Um, it will be the puddings actually, I hadn't thought of that. So I'll let you know about that. The other stuff will be provided. And Susie and Kofu are going to be organizing that. Unfortunately, in some ways at the moment, I'm at my extreme end of organizing this, which is largely, I've had a lot of ideas. I've now asked people to do things. I'm just gonna now have to draw people in to make it happen, because that's a bit that I'm not so good at. But anyway, it will happen. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be exciting and enjoyable, and you can all now cheer. And it will be free. <laughs> so that's then. What won't be so free is March 20th and March 27th, when we will be taking up an offering. Yeah. Excellent. Basically, as we begin to come back, we, we want a battle fund. This season, sort of January through to, through to the summer, is largely about rebuilding us as a community, letting the DNA we have as a community sort of flourish again and flower again and burst into life again. And that's what we want to do. But come September, we want to be a community that is reaching our community. And for that, we need a bit of a battle fund. Um, we need it for our kids' work, our youth work, PA building, including um, seeing if we can pay people to actually do stuff in the building, um, outreach and stuff like that. And so we're looking to take up an offering on the 20th and the 27th, and it would be really great if we could raise somewhere in the region of about 20,000. That's uh, where that is, 20th and 27th of March. Is that clear? Great. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about life groups. Then, I've got a questionnaire for you with five questions, which you are going to break into groups, fill in, and then I will then take questions after you've filled them in. Okay? <clears throat> Our life group leaders have done an amazing job over the last two years just holding everything together. But we want to develop the midweek life of Open Door and take some of the pressure off leading a group. So we're looking to make groups more accessible. We're looking to have much more variety. We're looking to have more choice. We're looking at doing things that people want to do. And we want it to be more around discipleship in life. So that's our sort of goals. Being a life group leader at the moment is, I think, 
one of the more challenging tasks in church life, full stop. Because not only have you got to lead worship, lead Bible study, lead prayer, and try and get other people to do some of those things as well, which is probably the hardest one. But you're also have sort of a responsibility and an expectation of looking after people. And meanwhile, you're expected to bring up your family, live as a single individual, and work. It's, it's a huge task. And we just want to, over the next couple of years, really break some of those tasks down a little bit and make leading a life group, um, leading a group much, much easier. The other thing <coughs> about life group um, particularly in the UK, strangely, is that if you become a life group leader, it is expected that you will do it until the day after you die. <laughs> and uh, across the churches that I've been involved in, it's like if, we, if you step down from being a life group leader, there is very often a real sense of failure because you feel like, well, I haven't died but I've stopped being a life group leader. And we just want to lift that burden from people. So <clears throat> we, would, we want them to still express our body ministry. So we want people to be learning from one another in terms of skills, um, developing people's character, developing people's knowledge. We want them to be, have prayer and we want them to be God-centered. But for the next 15 months or so, we're expecting the groups to all be short term. So it'll be eight to 12 weeks. And we're going to run it for a, probably for about 15 months like that, see how it goes. So you, people will have an opportunity to go to four different groups, probably. The negative is there's not the sort of closeness of relationship that you get when you've been in a group for sort of two or three years. The positive is it does shake us all up a little bit. It expands the number of people we know in the church and it is uncomfortable for many of us having to get to know people, spend 12 weeks with them and then move on to another group. Positively, we can learn and we will broaden the number of people that we know. So what are we thinking of here? We're thinking of, we want, we want to run an alpha group, so one of them would be an alpha. It may be that you would join a Zoom prayer group and the group would meet for eight to 12 weeks at a certain time and pray together. It may be that you're studying a book of the Bible. It may be a church history cook. Um, course. So that's because I'm reading the next word. <clears throat> I hate reading. <laughs> it may be that we do how, do, how do you do cooking? How do you cook plantain? How do you cook a roast dinner? And just have a cooking course for eight to 12 weeks where you're sharing all the different things. It may be a men only group, maybe a women only group. Um, one suggestion so far has been a photography group where you go out, you learn how to take photos, but in the same time you're talking about the amazing creation that you are taking photos of. It may be a worship prayer fellowship group. It may be what's more traditional in terms of a life group. Those are all the possible groups. The goal of it, as I've said, is just to shake us all up a little bit. It's to relieve pressure on leadership. And it's also to broaden the number of people that could lead a group like that. Now, Hannah, could you give... These aren't... You want groups of four or five people. There are five questions and just sort of spread them out. You have to move your chairs. If you can 
So we want, I don't know, eight or nine groups. Just look at the questions, answer them. Because, unfortunately, the people that aren't here are also the people we want to hear the answers from. If you feel you can answer a question on behalf of someone who isn't here because you think you know what their answer is, could you answer that as well? Okay. Well, we'll just run around the groups on a couple of the questions. Um, and we will start on my left here. Hannah has a piece of paper. Um, question two. What sort of other activities or groups would your group be interested in? Yeah. Let's go. Andrew? Walking and sharing? Or walking or? Yep. Yeah. Ruth? Spiritual gifts practice? Social action? Hospitality? Ah, new members, mentoring, yep. Yeah. Right. Ruth? Right. You can go through the ones that haven't been mentioned. Anything to add to that, Hannah? Right, excellent. <laughs> Just while Mark chokes to death, but so that he dies happy, it's 3-0. Okay, and question three, which is, what is your most convenient day and time for attending a midweek group, including Saturdays and Sundays? So what sort of days did you have? Right, Ruth? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or son. Or. Yeah. Right. Just, just for the sake of playing devil's advocate for a minute, <clears throat> do we think that we think midweek just because it is ingrained in us that that's when we meet? <laughs> Comment. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ginny? Yep, that's great. Just ask, because I'm just interested. Because <laughs> um, obviously... It's hard for me to judge because I've been doing this job for over 30 years now, so it's just another midweek. Um, excellent. Right, if I could just have the bits of paper back. 
that would be really helpful. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Right, are there any questions? Does anyone want to ask anything? Absolutely anything. We're looking to start sometime in May. Yeah. Fundamentally, yes, although I think it's conceivable. One of the things I didn't say is with these groups, the expectation is that you'd have to sign up for it and we would limit the number to 12 so it would be first come, first served in terms of the groups just because it's unfair for someone to have to lead 40 people um, and uh, because you'll be able to move around groups as we do different things. Um, so, but some, it's quite possible that some may want to carry on the traditional group and that will be fine. And it will run for eight weeks and then you can decide whether you carry it on again the next term. So that basically there'll be probably month gaps where there won't be any of those midweek meetings. Is that clear? Good. Yeah. That will, that will be my expectation, yes. So if you sign up to lead um, a Bible study group, you sign, it up for, you sign up for one term to do it. You don't sign up to do it every term, as it were. Yeah. So in, in our previous church, we did something similar to this. And initially, I have to say that Adrian and I were really wary about it because we didn't like the idea of... Um, not getting to know people and you know building up that trust for prayer support things like that and but we were quite surprised and, and we led the groups as well to find that actually it worked really well and the things that david's saying um that uh, you do get to know a great deal more people and it's much better for community and we found that our relationships actually deepened and strengthened through it because we knew so many more people um, and but we did it we did it slightly differently than this but um, uh, but mostly basically it was the, it was the same idea and it was it was excellent so I, I would I would say try it and go for it. Thank you very much. I really didn't pay her to say that. I... Um, no, the idea is that I look more carefully at my diary to see whether it's eight weeks or 12 weeks. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I suspect certain terms will be longer than others. So it will, at the beginning, when you sign up, you will know whether you're signing up for eight weeks or nine weeks or 10 weeks or 11 weeks or 12 weeks. But it's purely me that has been unclear. As long, you were, as long as you were quick enough. As long as you were quick enough. There's nothing to stop you going to more than one group. So you could go to a Bible study and a walking group if they were both there. Any other questions? 
<laughs> the questions are just really helpful because it helps um, us get it more right. Really, now the questions? Yes? Go on, Hannah. We're all friends here. <laughs> I, do you know, Hannah, this is absolutely true. I, I couldn't phrase it right, but I nearly put down a committed group. <laughs> Just a group of people that say they're going to be together, every, every group. Because it... I agree. I once, Leslie and I once led a group. It was, it was thir- we had 32 members. We had a living room which would take eight. Um, and one of those families had 13 children. <laughs> if we did a social and they turned up, it transformed everything. But what you felt at the end of an evening was of those 32, there were nine of you, and you were so aware of the however many 9 from 32 is, 21, 23, 23. Um, I'll do the budget tomorrow. (laughs) You were just aware that they weren't there. And uh, so I'd agree with you, Hannah, there is a place for just a group of people that will commit to meet. Adrian. Lovely. And she's not here to disagree. (laughs) That'd be brilliant. Is that on the piece of paper? (laughs) I can write the art bit. Thank you. Anything else? I will move on. And partly in preparation to this, and partly um, because we've tried to do it for a couple of Easter's and each time COVID has got in the way. <clears throat> We're very, well, I'm very aware, and one or two other people are, that when you do, the Chris, when you do Christmas, you sort of get the whole Christmas story but particularly um, in our sort of circles of new stream of church, when it comes to Easter, you have Easter Sunday. Um, Leslie and I, I suppose three years ago now, we went on a Catholic Easter retreat at a place called Amplethorpe Abbey. Our, daughter in, our daughter-in-law is a, comes from a charismatic Catholic family, and uh, they said, why don't you come on our retreat? And it was staggering. And I said to Leslie halfway through, I have read more of the Bible and heard more of the Bible at this retreat than I would in any New Frontiers church over Easter. Because they just did the Easter story in such depth. Um, And we had this um, one service, nine o'clock on the Saturday night. They normally would light a dirty great big bonfire but as it was too wet and windy so they just had a little bonfire just in a little courtyard and you were each given one of those long taper things and you went and you lit your little flame and the fire i think represented um peter's denial of jesus with the little sort of maid saying no i don't know who jesus is then you went into this abbey and you just had this little candle there about 500 of you and from half past nine through till 11 o'clock, half past 10, half past 10, 11 o'clock, you just had read to you from Genesis through the story of creation, through the story of Moses and the Exodus. Then you read the prophets. Then you had the Psalms. 
and then you can read, <coughs> read the story of Jesus up to the point of his death. And you had about an hour and a half, two hours of just listening to the Bible with a couple of hymns. Then at that point, you were told, right, we're going to have five minutes now of meditation on what you've heard. So you just sat in silence. All the time, the only light in the abbey were these 500 little tapers. It's absolutely stunning. And because uh, we didn't know what was happening, you're sitting there meditating, then suddenly all the lights go on and the resurrection story is read. And then from the resurrection through to the end of the book of Revelation is read. And I'm sitting there thinking... We would never do this in a new frontiers. You know, there's kids and everything falling asleep around. And you think, if, if I go to my church and say, hey, Easter Saturday, come along at nine o'clock. We'll just read the Bible till 12. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. So we thought this year we would look in more detail at the Easter story. So starting on Sunday the 27th, when we'll be looking at the triumphant, triumphal entry, and then we'll be looking every Sunday and every Wednesday um, until the 1st of May, when we look at the Ascension, we'll be looking at different aspects of the Easter story. On the Sundays, it will be a traditional service. The triumphant entry one will actually be an all-age service like last Sunday, which was just brilliant and outstanding. Tim and Becky and uh, Sophie and Corinne, um, just outstanding. It'll be another service like that, and I suspect there'll be some marching round and celebrations, and I don't know if we can get any palm leaves from anywhere, but <coughs> we'll be looking at the triumphant entry. And then on the Wednesdays, um, the first Wednesday, which will be the 30th of March, we're going to be looking at the Last Supper, and we will probably have soup and bread together. And in the middle of that, we will break bread together and get something more of the feel of actually what Jesus was doing when he just stood up and said, break bread. Because by the time he'd done it in the Passover meal, I think it was the third time they'd broken bread on that meal. And so we'll just be able to do it together as a community. We'll be looking at the story. There'll be some teaching, some praying, some discussion just so that we can read more of the Easter story together and be together. So that's, that'll be Wednesday the 30th of March through to Wednesday the 27th of April, apart from the 13th of April when we won't have a meeting. So that's going to be Easter at Open Door. Um, just looking to get into the story of Easter and all its meaning. Is that clear? Did that make sense? Ruth? Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is. Just to say, any other questions on that? Um, yes, we'll, we'll be letting people know this on. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never heard of it. But. <laughs> Pardon? March of Witness, right. The last, the last, not quite the last one, but the first, time, first one of the last one that we did in our church, we just caused trouble. Because what we didn't realise was, we thought we'd, get, we'd finally engage with the March of Witness on the Good Friday. So we turn up. What we didn't realize was this was a silent march of witness. <laughs> so, so one of our guys is walking along and saying, well, this is boring. He starts singing. <laughs> Moments later, everyone else is singing. Next time we meet as ministers, we get told, don't come to the next one. This is a silent march of witness and you've ruined it. <laughs> So it's not silent, is it, Adrian? <laughs> yeah, helpful to know. Helpful to know. I won't knock up a song. Right, good, excellent. 
Pardon? Oh, right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, obviously, Adrian would have loved to have been here, but is still not very well. Do I see Corrine? Is she here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, I, I saw, saw Adrian today, um, and <laughs> from my perspective, he's both better than he thinks he is and a lot worse than he thinks he is. <laughs> better in that, I think he has more energy than he thinks, but when, he, when it comes to how awake his mind is, he thinks his mind is a lot more awake than it actually is. <laughs> um, so he's, he's very definitely uh, not very well at the moment, but he's a lot better the last two days than he was last week, so he's moving in the right direction. Um, he's been signed off work for the n next two weeks, um, so we'll see what happens there. Okay. Now, I can distribute the spring at open door, and this can be one each. If you'd like to start there and pass those around. I mean, basically, that just gives an outline of March 26th and what we're doing over Easter and uh, the offering dates, I think. It's, Oh, I have one apology to make. One apology. On the week before Easter, due to a technical glitch, um, both Adrian and I will be on holiday. Um, it's something that we plan not to do, but I, I booked a holiday nearly a year ago, and it went on to I know. Um, because we booked a family holiday, so all, apart from the, our son in Australia, all our kids are coming together and the grandchildren, and we're going down to Cornwall for that week. When Adrian went on to church suite, he saw the week was free, so he also booked a family holiday, um, because it didn't jump from I know to church suite. So it was only when he... Um, came in and said, oh, I've booked that holiday. And I said, but that's the week I'm off as well. And uh, poor old Vanessa said, ah, oh, that's odd, because I remember both now, but they, know, they didn't show up on the same calendar. So I apologize for that. It's not something that we want to happen again. And now we'll just stick with church week. It shouldn't do, but just to let you know, it wasn't deliberate. Yes, Sarah. There's no times. <clears throat> the Wednesdays will be 7.45 to about, at the latest, 9.15, but we'll aim to finish, wrap them up by. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, Adrian will be here on Easter Sunday. I expect to be. It's the Sunday before the 10th when I think we're both away. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? May time. May.
If you have any further thoughts, comments, ideas, etc., please, please get in touch, let us know, talk to us. That would be excellent. I'm going to pray now, and then we can enjoy the rest of the evenings. Father, we do thank you that you've, you've not left us as orphans, but you've given us your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much that you have put us in a family together. You've put us in a body together. You've put us so that we can support one another, encourage one another. We can help one another. And we ask you, Father, as we sort of draw back as a community, we ask you that your Holy Spirit will come and join our hearts together with great strength, with great love, that in the days ahead, it might be very, very easy for others who at the present time don't know you to see your work in our lives, be drawn to you, and join us and fit in and add to your body here at Open Door. Father, we ask you, will you bless us with increased maturity among us, numerical increase, and an ability to bring your kingdom in a world that is so hurt and lost, a world that is so bewildered, a world that feels so uncertain. May you enable us to bring your truth with great love. May you enable us to show that you are the unchanging God, the rock on which we stand, the unchanging creator and father of all that we see. Help us, Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry it's been just me, but there you go. God bless. Please take a donut. <laughs>